<laughs> uh, I would like to thank the, um, the group that brings in the watermelon. Uh, players had to kind of end the year break camp uh, watermelon. Uh, they brought it out for players, and the players really enjoy it. I didn't get to share in it. Um, this time I was in too big a hurry to try to get back over, but um, I thank them for doing that every year. It's been a tradition since even before I was here as a player, so that's great. Um, scrimmage two in the books. I thought the enthusiasm and the desire to practice was much better. We had uh, a lot more energy on both sides of the ball. Um, guys played harder for longer. I think, I think that had a lot to do with the fact that every day this week, other than I think one day Wednesday or something, we went inside, but every other day we were out in the heat. And the guys really pushed today. I mean, it was hot out there, but it wasn't like I noticed it with the players. It wasn't like it really affected them from a fatigue standpoint. So that part was positive. Uh, a little bit sloppy at times with some penalties, which I would have thought that would have been more last week. Um, had a couple offsides, a couple snap infractions, cadence issues. Uh, you don't like those because you have to overcome those penalties. Had a couple defensive uh, penalties that were aggressive, but pass interferences that hurt us hurt us in some critical situations. So the penalties was probably the, the, the most glaring thing that stuck out as negative. Um, but the kids played hard. Some guys made some good plays, and it was very competitive, ones on ones. It was a similar format to last time. We had uh, a couple different periods. We didn't do a third down period. We did a second and 10 and third down period. Uh, we did a couple different two minute situations. Um, we did a couple other end of game situations, but for the most part, the uh, scrimmage was similar to last time. Same typical number of plays, about 130 plays. <clears throat> Coach, uh, what's the official word on Malcolm Parrish, and um, what does that mean for the secondary for the time being? Uh, official word is he's got a, uh, a small broken bone in his foot. Um, we think he can be back really within the next two to four weeks. We don't know how long it's going to be. So he's not been ruled out for the opener, but uh, we'll see how it goes day to day. Um, he had surgery to repair it, um, and hope we get him back as soon as possible. As far as where we go from there, you know, we, we practice Aaron Davis in the spring, some at corner. We practice him every day, some at corner. He does drills at corner. He'll continue to work at star and corner. Tyreek McGee will continue to work at corner. Um, you know, uh, DeAndre Baker's working at corner, and then we've got the freshmen that are all working over there. Um, we moved on where he can play strong and free. Richard LeCount's playing free some. JR's playing star some. D'Angelo Gibbs continues to play star. So it really hasn't changed anything other than it's put the priority on getting more corners ready to play because we're one less corner than we were before. Who's first to go in that, that, at the corner that Malcolm normally occupies? Uh, don't know that yet. That will be determined by how practice goes, the film from today and the upcoming week's practice. I mean, today Tyreek played at some, and so did uh, Aaron Davis. What is the effect of, I mean, Malcolm obviously is a really good tackler. He's really experienced. What, what's the effect of just? Well, it's not doomsday. I mean, we can sit around and cry and whine about it, but it's it's not a position that we're real deep at right now. So it's, uh, it's, it's not a great situation, but that's what football is, guys. I mean, football, you're going to have injuries, and you've got to overcome them. I'm very fortunate to have a guy who's played a lot of football here in Aaron Davis, a guy, Tyreek McGee, that worked really hard at that position last year. And we've kind of been working Tyreek there all along. You know, everybody's been talking about Tyreek at star. We've been working Tyreek at corner because we felt like that he was the next corner should we get somebody injured. And so Tyreek, Aaron Davis, Air Speed, William Poole, um, Eric Stokes, all those guys will be battling it out. Typically, Coach, a lot of decisions are made about this time. Did you, did you see anything today, uh, realizing you still have to look at the tape, that, that, that yeah, you know, that guy's going to figure into things? You're right about the decisions being made, but you're also right in saying that you've got to watch the tape. I mean, for me today, the goal is to come out and find out more about the freshmen. I feel like coming out of the last scrimmage, we didn't know enough about the freshmen and sophomores because some of them heads were spinning. They were just out there a little bit overwhelmed. I thought today more of those guys – played and played with more composure. Now we got to watch the tape to determine uh, where we go from here, but I really think it comes down to special teams. You know, we got three freshman linebackers that will decide, all right, are these guys going to be, the, who's going to be the best on special teams? Of those six DBs, not counting the count, who's out there playing more, of those six DBs, who, who's going to, who's going to play on special teams? So we have to make those decisions. I can't tell you any one of those guys stuck out um, more than another. The good news is we got some really good effort on special teams. I mean, guys are out there 
compete. And we're not doing special teams where it's, you know, the kickoff turn team against a, a scout unit. It's the best you can get out there, the best against the best, which to me increases competition. Kirby, what did you learn about the secondary today without Malcolm uh, that you maybe didn't know before in this kind of situation? Man, nothing really. I mean, nothing I didn't know before. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's our secondary. We got the guys we got. We got to get the guys we got to play better, to execute better, and, um, and be disciplined. You know, I think Coach Tucker does a great job with those guys. So we got to coach them up, you know, because we don't have Malcolm right now. And we don't know how long it's going to be. So that's what football is. It's about a guy getting an opportunity, stepping up, and go make some plays. What are some takeaways that um, from Jacob Eason can you do for, scrimmage, for the second scrimmage? Um, I thought he threw the ball down the field a little better. Uh, he was a little more accurate than he was the last scrimmage, uh, but so was Ron. I thought both those kids were a little more accurate. I don't think that's a reflection of Malcolm not being out there. I just think it's a, a reflection of the receivers and quarterback being on the same page a little more. Um, I thought they both executed well and did some good things. Do you have the same five pretty much with the ones on the offensive line, or are you still working some other guys in there? Uh, it was the same as y'all been seeing. It's been kind of the same group there. I think we rotated a little bit left tackle to make sure that Isaiah got some time out to because if we lost him, that's probably the toughest loss we could deal with. So we practiced some more left tackle and then we rotated the guards kind of in a triangle there between Solly, uh, Pat Allen, and Kendall Baker. But Andrew's still working right tackle. Are you going to, as far as timetable on, on the O line? Do you want to roll out there next week with who you're going to roll with or continue trying out? Oh, no, next continue week? competition. I mean, when you, when you guys will see it, it'll be the same group that it always is, probably. But we have to rotate during practice because if Lamont goes down, what happens? Where does everybody go? Dashawn's a guy that can play a lot of positions, so we'll continue to move guys, but that never stops. It's just, are they getting 80% of their reps where they play in the game and then 20% where if something happens? And we're constantly asking ourselves, if he goes down, he goes there. If he goes down, he goes here. So we have to play those situations out. Uh, at what point are you going to know who that starting five is going to be for App State? Is that going to be like right before the game, or is that you know a week before? Like, what is the timetable on that? I don't know. But when we know, we'll know. You know, it's one of those things that we practice the week before the game, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Something can happen one of those days. It's football. You know, so it's not about naming a starting offensive line. That's not really what's important. That's not important. What's important is how the starting offensive line plays and how many reps we can get them in the right spot. So it's, it's that y'all want to know really bad who the starting offensive line is. That's not the goal for us. The goal for us is get the best five in the best five spots and then get all the others work where they can play if somebody goes down. That's that's our goal. How much more comfortable is Miko getting uh, with the offensive I think he's gotten much more comfortable. I think he's got better ball security. He had a couple plays today he flashed. He flashed on a punt return today. We got a great battle going at punt return. Um, I think Miko's getting more and more comfortable. I mean, he's still got to work on his pass catching. It's not natural for him. He's, again, he didn't play receiver in high school. He caught it from a snap. It's different from a snap than when they're coming at you to hit you. So uh, he continues to work on that. And um, Miko's going to be a good weapon for us, we feel like. What is it about Andrew Thomas over there at right tackle that, you know, a freshman possibly starting in the SEC, that doesn't happen all the time. What is it about him that makes him uh, possibly in that spot? Maturity. He's extremely mature. Curry, what kind of progress have you seen from Richard uh, LeCount this preseason? You know, he's, he's gotten a lot better. He started in the spring with what I call rat trap all over the place. Just playing jump. I mean, he just runs anywhere and does anything. He never knew what he was going to do. And now, I think he understands, you know, 50, 60 percent. And we got to get him to about 90 to 100 because the guy lining up next to him usually can tell him what to do with the ones. He didn't have that luxury with the twos. So when he gets to go with the ones, which we did a, a lineup where he's in, which is J.R. at star, Dom at the other safety, and Richard at the other safety, he, uh, he does pretty good with them. When he has to make all the decisions, he struggles with it sometimes. But He's grown up now, and uh, he practices hard every day, and he's physical. So I'm glad he was here in the spring so that he could be where he is now. Two, two part question. When, when will you guys move into uh, preparing for App State in earnest, you know? And do you, can, do you know, is there much carryover from what you're going to be looking at with App State to week two 
that, that you know there's some similarities there that you can carry into week two as well. Yeah, I think anytime you play two you know, two teams that there may or may not be similarities in those two between App State and Notre Dame. There's not a ton. There's a little bit um, different on different sides of the ball. It's a different story because obviously one's offense is different different than the other. And one's defense is a little different than the other. Um, but we feel like. You know, by the end of the week, next week, we'll be able to start working on it. We, we don't, I don't believe in starting to work on an opponent you're going to play immediately because kids can get burned out on that. I've had a lot of history uh, as an assistant coach where you, you do want more than a week, but you don't want two weeks. So we'll do sometime next week. You know, we'll start working on how I will say if it's Thursday, Wednesday, you know, Friday, we'll decide where we are after Tuesday and Monday's practice. Last question. Any update, kicker, punter competition? Yeah, you know, uh, punter competition is uh, leaning more and more probably towards Cam. He's done a really good job. Marshall's done well too, but I don't, you know, I don't think Marshall's passed uh, the injury completely. Um, he's still coming back from that. Um, the field goal kicking, you know, is it's tight and the kicking off is good. I will say this: Rod kicked off really good today, um, and then the, the field goal kicking is really tight. It'll be probably be decided within this week, um, but Rod Rod's kicking off really well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.